Yeah, I mean, part of that part of that discussion right now rests uh, so often with with staff and planners and councillors that are not necessarily trained up on it. And so having architects like yourself come in, train up councillors, be in the know about what really truly makes a great design for people, what's going to help the built environment and people get around, right. or want them to encourage them to get out of their car, those sorts of things. Having architects like yourself come and do those sorts of things will make a difference. We're not trained up on that, right? We come in and we have a anecdotal information about it, right. but we need that type of that type of training. The other thing too is, you know, right now uh, we're going through a big review of how we do procurement, how we actually, uh, you know, look at um, because of the stage two LRT and what's happened there. Uh, I've just tabled a motion that would look at procurement and look at our delegated authority bylaw. I think council needs to take back that authority, work with architects like yourself, work with engineers, get that knowledge, and then uh, you know deliver for residents based on the knowledge that they'll they'll gain from that, and not just solely rely on, on on staff opinions. There's a whole host of opinions out there that need to come to the fore, and that's I'd like to see more of that. What about yourself? How do you think we could uh, get a get, do a better job of that at council? Well, I think you know you hit the nail on the head. I mean, I think procurement is a big part of that. You know, when we set low standards or set low targets and write standards into RFPs that you know don't really make sense or don't reach far enough, you really limit the goal of what we can try to achieve. You yeah. limit the innovation that can be brought to the table because it's all about meeting the minimum standard. So I think you know design competitions are a great opportunity for that. We don't even necessarily have to have the funding in place for a design to be implemented, but you know, to even have an ideas competition. Um, and I think that's a great way to get fresh thinking, fresh ideas on, a, on, on the table. Uh, firms that don't normally compete because you know they know they're not gonna win on price, they know they're not gonna have a low fee. But to put ideas together and to really show what change could be like. Um, You're absolutely right. I mean, I just met with the consulting engineers and they're, they're talking about the exact same thing. We're really having trouble with our innovative side. We're going more and more in Ottawa with the lowest bid, yeah. lowest common denominator. We're not getting the results we need. and so. So we're seeing it now. We're seeing the results of, of that type of bidding process. So we really, I think, need that innovation. There's a lot of fresh ideas in Ottawa. But I think bring those communities in, right? Bring those professionals in. Bring that community in. Right. Get those ideas out there. We kind of have a, a bit, you know, it's been it's been a while now. Or we've had kind of a stale uh, discussion around Ottawa. Big projects have been on the agenda, but we're not talking about innovative uh, thinking. And that, that, I think, needs to come back in our city. Yeah, I think so, too. Especially when we think about the other things that Ottawa is famous for. You know, as being a technology hub, yeah. being a creative hub, an arts hub, a uh, music hub. There's so many great possibilities that we could we could showcase uh, yeah. to the world. You know, people come to Ottawa. It's a massive tourism industry uh, that really supports Ottawa. The people come here, they see so many things, and they see the amazing works uh, of architecture and engineering, um, but they're all things that were built, you know, 40 years ago, 100 yeah. years ago. How can we show the amazing technology um, that we can bring, the amazing ideas we can bring to the table today? Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, part of this, too, comes with uh, how much developers have dominated our city in the last little while. Unfortunately, there's there's been a big codger of developers that donate repeatedly to the same candidates and keep them in there. I think we need to look at that funding scheme, how that works, should developers be able to donate camp to campaigns in terms of their executives, uh, and how that influences the planning process, our planning committee. I've put out ideas about splitting up our planning committee so that we have localized planning committees in the right. rural, urban, and suburban areas. Right. They're locally elected, they can be held accountable there, and we get better ideas that would come to the fore in terms of people that know those areas. You don't always know the area you're voting on in planning committees. So it's been stacked this term of council, unfortunately. I think you know we need to see that broken up uh, and get back to the ideas table. That's of innovation is something I propose. I hope to see that change in midterm governance review. Uh, but that's a big part of this, is who's actually uh, able to move the needle and in control in the city of Ottawa. It should be the elected officials and innovators like yourself, not necessarily just uh, development uh, staff. So uh, interestingly, you know, in 2013 and then in 2018, the OAA's uh, site plan uh, review process, it showed that the cost of site plan delays is over a billion dollars in Ontario. Right. Right. Um, so some really interesting ideas of how to change planning approval in terms of speeding things up, uh, cutting out the red tape, making things smoother, more yeah. efficient, and a lot more cost effective. And some of, them, some of them are dependent on provincial law, but some of them are really dependent on, on local initiatives, right. you know, deferment of development charges for highly sustainable buildings, right. things that can help with cash flow. Do you think those are things that we could see happen in, in the next few years? 
Rangers. Yeah, I think there's been a couple of changes already towards site plan changes now based on the size of building, uh, when or not a councillor can pull the de delegated authority at the committee. Uh, there's been a couple changes that have come in. I think we'll see more and more of that as it goes, particularly for buildings that are, you know, if we get our zoning right and our bylaws right and we're staying within that zone, uh, kind of site-specific zone, we're going to get those things where they don't necessarily have to go through this huge uh, rigmarole, especially around sustainability, uh, quality built environment, inviting people in, people, places, affordable housing. These are things that we need right now. If we can get that uh, sorted at uh, the local level where it does become more efficient, then I, yeah, I think I think we can see uh, some of that progress being made in the next in the next couple of years. That's great. Um, one of the things that's really, I think, really um, sort of a public awareness knowledge or public awareness issue is that um, most people don't know who an architect um, is on a building. They know who the developer is, but they don't know who the architect is. Um, and you know, we see you know a plaque or you know gets posted for a bridge that's opened or a, you know a school gets opened or something. And it always has the politicians, the yep. school board, but we never get the name of the architect. Right. In Toronto, a few years ago, there was a, a part of the site plan bylaw that required architects to name all their buildings. Right. And their their architect's name has to be on a plaque forever on the building. Huh. I know Steve Willis is kind of interested in this as well. Um, do you think that's something that would help raise public awareness of, of the role of an architect? You know, it's a good idea. Uh, and I think architects are important. And in a city like Ottawa, we should be promoting them much more often. Uh, and so, you know, I'd be completely open to something like that, to see that, that name there, as long as it's done, you know, in a, in a, in a stylish way, in a way that, you know, it enhances the building and not detracts from it. I think it's a great idea. Excellent, excellent. Um, so a big um, thing that I'm a big believer in is uh, equity in the built environment. Um, you know, and it's everything from making sure that buildings don't just meet a minimum accessibility requirement, but that are really inclusive, that are really welcoming. Um, you know, and that also extends to the way we design our sidewalks, um, our transit systems, yep. um, all those things. What do you think is the biggest challenge to building equity in the built environment? Yeah, para parity is a huge issue right now. Um, um, and, you know, probably uh, one of the big challenges is, is, is how we're making buildings accessible for folks uh, in terms of welcoming environments coming in. So you look at the building behind us, like uh, West Coast Video, it sits here empty. This building could be a fabulous building with, you know, accessible frontage coming in, wide enough uh, doorways to come in, wide sidewalks out the front. How you interact with the city uh, in terms of that sidewalk uh, streetscape, uh, whether there's, there's, there's cycling options, walking options, uh, you know, more accessibility options for folks that that's that's what's important uh, and so uh, you know I, I think for, for me personally I, I I'd like to hear more from architects engineers what we can do to do that sort of thing uh, plans will come into our office and we're not always aware of what's gonna be uh, you know better for people in terms of those units that they're creating number of bedrooms uh, how high the building is that's why we need that type of education from from architects like yourself that's great thank you um, we're always happy to help and I think that you know just about every architect in the city would be happy to come in and talk about architecture um, you know, we're working on a national policy on architecture, and, and it really comes down to, at a grassroots level, uh, municipalities, cities championing this. Um, right. And that's what led to the success of the development of a national policy in Quebec, uh, which they've now adopted. So, you know, we really see cities as being, um, you know, the key place for this to happen. So we're excited to, to, to continue being part of that conversation. Fantastic, fantastic. Some of the stuff is as basic as things like, you know, wind tunnels and how that building is going to relate to the other buildings around it. Uh, what type of uh, you know architecture is going to be on the roof, and what, what what options are there on the roof? Whether you're looking over at other homes or not, these are the things that we consider coming in. And so I love. I, I mean, I, I get these uh, submissions from folks, and and uh, oftentimes it, it seems like it's about maximizing profit. I understand they have to think about that, but at the same time, I'd like to see a more focus on that quality built environment within our communities, uh, and the people that are already living there have a big say on it. I don't think it's an envyism. I think it's just qu good quality architecture. Architecture, and that's that's one thing I'd be looking for. There was a really great article um, a couple days ago uh, in the UK about the value of beautiful buildings and yeah. how important beautiful buildings are. And the challenge, of course, is beauty is always in the eye of the beholder, right? right? Um, you know, not everybody loves the same has the same definition of beauty, right? Um, without legislating beauty, how do you think we could kind of have a com common understanding of what a beautiful building might be? It'd be nice to get some sort of design. Uh, 
uh, uh, s standards or something in the official plan that they're updating now that talks about the heritage of those areas, talks about the streetscape that exists now, fitting into those contexts while, while delivering beauty. And so I think there is some, there's some openness there. We're doing a, a study right now in the Glebe on Bank Street, and some of those discussions are coming in is, is what kind of street frontage do we want? How much more space from the, the road do we want here? What kind of overhang? Where should the setback be on the third floor, the fourth floor? Where should we do it, doing these sorts of things? That all comes into design beauty, I think. Uh, and so I, I like having those discussions, and it does involve the community a little bit more. What kind of building do you want to see here? Is it the type that is in, you know, Westboro? Is it a more suburban mall type of building? What kind of thing do you want to see? And so I think that would really open up the conversation, particularly community associations. They have a lot of knowledge on these things. You bring in architects, staff, community associations to talk about these things. I, I bet you get to some more, co more common cause rather than the one-offs we've been seeing uh, around the city and in, in infill. That's awesome. What's your favorite building in Ottawa? You know what? I love Lansdowne Park. I love the Aberdeen Pavilion. That is that's probably my favorite building of all. It, it's got such a historic, uh, you know, historic features to it, uh, historic spot in Ottawa. And so, I, I guess that's that's one of my my most favorite. That's <laughs> awesome. I love that building too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a great place. it's incredible. I, I think they need at Lansdowne a historic museum, you know, a, mu a museum of history for Lansdowne, a yeah. Lansdowne museum that speaks about these things because it has such a, a place in our history that isn't always known. That's true. And uh, you know. One of the things we're talking about now is keeping that public side public. Uh, no, you know, we don't want an expansion of that P3 there. We want to make sure that Lansdowne stays public. Those consultations are coming up soon, and Aberdeen Pavilion, of course, and the square are big parts of that. That's fantastic. Thanks so much for taking the time to be here today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Thanks.